Hi, this is Janie Slash with Corpse Paint Show and Little Spark Films at Texas Frightmare Weekend. I am here with Jean from Song of Solomon. Hello. Uh, are, you have, are you having a good time here at Texas Frightmare Weekend? Yeah, it's been fantastic so far. The Friday night, now the Saturday night, we've got the screening at midnight. So it's going to be great times. My first time at this event. Are you going to be sitting there waiting to see everybody's reactions? Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're going to be there for the, for the whole duration of it and whatever parties ensue afterwards. Great. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about Song of Solomon? Song of Solomon is the third in the American guinea pig series. Now, in, in some markets, we're, we're uh, promoting it as just the Song of Solomon because um, some places are actually afraid of advertising something under the name of American guinea pig. So for some of the bigger events, like this event even, uh, it's just being promoted as the Song of Solomon. Same movie, just it's without the American guinea pig moniker over the top of it. And uh, yeah, it's the third one in the series. It's probably the, um, the biggest budget, budgeted one so far. Um, and it's, it was a lot of hard work going back almost two years ago, editing, soundtrack work, um, etc. Uh, and, and now it's finally done. It's at press now. Uh, the retail release comes out on August 14th. The retail release, there was a lot of Indiegogo supporters we had. They're expecting to have their materials shipped out probably by the end of July. To get it to get their stuff just a little bit ahead of the retail stuff is a little perk for them. Uh, tell us a little bit about your character from the film. In this one, I play one of three of the priests that attempt the exorcism on the uh, possessed victim. And it, in my in the case of my character, I'm I'm a, a type of priest that's been in a lot of bad situations. He's very scarred internally and externally. Um, so he's, he's got more of a demeanor of could he be as much of a help as a hindrance to the exorcism? Or is he more concerned possibly whether or not he beats the demon and whether or not the victim survives or not? It, the way it's played is to make you wonder whether or not this guy might be okay to do an exorcism. And, you know, and then the other two priests that are the, are the characters in the film there, there's a different, a different angle for them too. So there's a lot of uh, variation with the three of us. Are you a fan of the original guinea pig films? Yeah, that's how I'd known Stephen Barrow uh, from the beginning. Is about 20 years ago he had a video store in Tampa, Florida called uh, Video Mayhem. So I'd, I'd rent videos from him and such, and he was really knowledgeable about a lot more of the obscure titles, Asian titles. Uh, other international types of extreme horror titles and such and he introduced me to the guinea pig series and around that time he had acquired the rights for the films which became the beginnings of unearthed films and that's so that's how I was aware of those so over the years we've kept in contact and when it came around that he was going to do the American versions of these films I perked up and I'm like, hey, that was great to hear that that thing you were talking about 10 years ago has finally come around and you're going to do these. And when I saw names attached like uh, Marcus Cook, who's done a lot of incredible effects work on various films, and I'm a big fan of James Van Beber's uh, Deadbeat at Dawn and the Manson Family, and when I saw his name attached in there somewhere, I, I just had to contact Steven. I hadn't talked to him for a few years, and I'm like, hey, that's really great to hear. So with the first guinea pig here, uh, first American guinea pig film, uh, he had my involvement where we made a music video for one of my band's projects, and that's uh, it was one of the special features on the DVD of the uh, Bouquet of Guts and Gore DVD. And from that, 
we continued correspondence and then it came around to the second installment, Blood Shock, and that's where he invited me to be one of the performers and that as, a, as, a, as an orderly. So that was actually my debut of actual involvement in any of this film stuff at all. So the Song of Solomon is actually my second film involvement on any level. As both uh, actor, soundtrack, and now with Song of Solomon, I'm also one of the associate producers. So it's a little more involved, a little more gamble at stake, but uh, that's what makes it all worth it. Was this your first experience in acting during the guinea pig films, or did you have any experience yeah, prior to the first. The that's first great. experience in acting, yes. That's great. Steven's a great guy. He does great work. And Marcus Cook, he actually directed Bloodshock, is that correct? Yeah, he was the director on Bloodshock. Uh, Steven Burrow wrote Bloodshock. But uh, Marcus Cook was the effects and the director on that one. Stephen Barrows, the director on Song of Solomon and producer, and Unearthed is the producer. And then I'm an actor, soundtrack, and associate producer with Song of Solomon. Yeah, Stephen Barrows sold me Bloodshot. He told me it was a love story. <laughs> Have you seen it? Yes. I love the ending. The ending was awesome. It's, it's got its romantic moments to it. It's a good movie, though. I can't wait to see Song of Solomon. Um, you know, with like Exorcist movies, I always hear weird things happen on set. Was there anything strange that happened while you were on set? Not so much on set, but a lot of things happen to people. I mean, you like you've heard stories with movies like The Exorcist that like people died or got sick or anything. Yeah. There was flash floods. The the house that's featured in Song of Solomon completely got flooded out. It's a cabin. And when you see it in the film, it's not at ground level. There's steps to get up into it. It was flooded. The whole region got flooded. People lost, I mean, people lost their homes. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure how much has been made public, but a few of the cast members lost about 70 or 80 percent of their valuables from flooding. I, not. Rolling into 2017, some things happened to me. I got sick, was in the hospital for a while. And one of the editors of the film had to have a few surgeries. You know, so there, there, there were some bizarre things that happened. Do I believe in all this spiritual stuff and all this kind of... No, but things did happen. Yeah. Just interesting coincidences for sure. But thank you, for like, thank you for giving me time today for the interview and everything. And we look forward to seeing the movie tonight. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you at midnight. Yes, I will see you at midnight. Thank you for coming here to Texas Frightmare Weekend and coming to Texas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, the Corp Pay Show. Every Sunday we're here live. We're going to give you 90 minutes of live, great, irreverent shit. <laughs> and also just talk about Satan and talk about movies and talk about metal and talk about Jenny Slash's uh, weekly dose of horror. Yeah. Texas Fright My Weekend. I am here with Dee Wallace. Don't just don't stare at my boobs all the time. Sure. I do get comments from occasionally religious fanatics. I have seen people yeah. stopping down. Who want to wag it. their finger at me for a ring tank. The Corpse Paint Show rules!